What is good, everybody? We got another episode of Ask FP here in rotation here. So I'm going to jump right into these questions, but I had to kind of cut things short a little bit today. But I got a lot of questions, uh, but I'm on a mission, on a project. I'm going to try to let you guys in on it a little bit later. But we're going to start off with the feature question of this particular episode. And it comes from Matt Epting. Matt Epting says, what is your favorite heel turn and face turn? He's talking about obviously wrestling. Uh, so my favorite face turn is John Cena's face turn from I think it was like 2003 when he turned on Heyman and Team Lesnar right before Survivor Series. I thought that was pretty cool. It's very historic basically, right? My favorite heel turn also involved John Cena, but it was Mark Henry's fake retirement speech. Oh my God. He wasn't even completely a face, but oh my God, the way he did that, to me, that mic work is some of the best in the last, what, 10, 15 years. Simon Torbay Sullivan says, did you like Crime Time when they were in the WWE? Was it right to split JTG and Shad back in 2010? I did not like Crime Time. I try not to be overly sensitive about the racism stuff that goes on with WWE, but that one was so bad. I just could not make myself like Crime Time. They were such a racial stereotype. I think both of them had talent, especially JTG, but um, I hated that gimmick. Uh, Nightwing says, what is your thought on NBA 2K making fun of Russell Westbrook for being the cover of NBA Live? I didn't, I don't know if I took it as that. You know what I mean? Somebody got to get dunked on in the video. I mean, that's pretty much what it's about. So I can't really say I took it as them take, make, taking a shot at them, but maybe they were because live has kind of been taking shots at 2K through this entire, you know, pre-release time period as they get more confidence in their product. So I, I don't know, you know. Simon Torve Sunland says, is player power becoming a bigger issue in professional sports? And what are your thoughts on perceived player power? So when you say player power, I'm, I'm assuming you mean in the overall strength of professional athletes today. Um, I think it, I think, I think for the, for some of the more, uh, physical, brutal, somewhat violent sports, it could be a, a issue for sure, because people are bigger, stronger, and faster. And in sports where you fight, that could mean even more increased dangers. So, um, I think it is, I mean, but what are you going to really do about it? You know what I mean? Unless it's artificially, uh, generated. So I, I don't know if there's anything to really do about it unless you get rid of the sports altogether which I'm not saying is necessarily something that's totally out of whack. So we'll see. Dylan Freeman says the best NBA draft day trades. Um, I believe Kobe was traded on draft. I know he was traded before you actually played for the Hornets. He was traded for Vladi Divac. So obviously that's great. Uh, Scottie Pippen to the Seattle Supersonics for Odin Polonies. That was a bit a pretty big trade. Uh, well, that was more than a pretty big trade. Vince Carter getting traded on draft day. Very big, memorable trade. Uh, I remember also Steve Francis getting traded from the Grizzlies. He cried because he didn't want to go to Vancouver. It was crazy. But yeah, those are the ones that jumped out to me immediately. Dylan Freeman says, do you see Pharaoh Cooper having a big year? And if you don't know who he is, look at his stats from last year's Tennessee game. Yeah, he's a dynamic wide receiver, kind of on the short side, about 5'11", from South Carolina. And he, he's dynamic, man. Um, really good run after the catch guy. Um, so it'll be interesting, but you obviously do know he's a little shorter than what the NFL wants from uh, their receivers these days. So we'll have to see, um, you know what I mean? We have to see ultimately how he fits. This year obviously will be huge for him. Um, if he can have a, a big time, I think he had 69 catches last year, so a really good lead last year. But if he's able to really take that step this year, you could see a dude that jumps into the first round despite being only 5'11". So we'll see what happens. We also have Dylan Freeman with a question. He's brought in Matt Epting. I love the fact that the Ask F peers know each other and they having conversations and asking questions. I dig it. I'm feeling y'all. I appreciate that. Uh, he says, uh, Matt Epting says that Seth Rollins is better than CM Punk. Your thoughts? Um, I would probably have to agree with Matt Efton, to be honest. Seth Rollins is without weakness. Like, Punk was willing to do everything in the ring, and he was good and solid. But he was nowhere near the athlete Seth is. 
and Seth's mic skills have gotten increasingly better every single time he gets on television and picks the mic up. Are they quite on Punk's level? Maybe not yet, but I have every every inkling or every signal to believe that they could be getting there and the in-ring product is already on a whole nother level. So, I, yeah, I have to agree with Matt. Dylan Freeman says, will Dudley boys win the tag team championships? I would have to say they probably will. I wouldn't even be shocked if it was part of the deal when they came back and signed. I kind of don't know if I like that because I thought the New Day had a really nice thing going. It would have been nice to see them kind of hold down the tag team division for a minute. But obviously, if you bring the Dudleys there, you didn't bring them there just to be looking around. So, you know, it is what it is. Dylan Freeman says, will Dale Jr., Dale Earnhardt Jr., ever win a Sprint Cup? You know, I've thought about this, oh, especially over the last two or three years, which is when I pretty much been paying attention to NASCAR. And, you know, I really don't think so. And you know why I don't think so? I don't know if the motivation is truly there. And the reason why I say that is because from a businessman standpoint, he's already ridiculously rich with the Hendrick Sports thing. So, so many people are on his team, and I just don't know if the motivation to actually be the man is there for him. So, that's my take on it. Dylan Freeman also says the top NFL quarterbacks of all time. Well, for me, number one would be, it's a really a tough one between Elway and Montana, but I take Elway. The person that, you know, I take Montana second. Give me Dan Marino third. Um... And in fourth, I would probably take... Well, actually, I'd put Tom Brady ahead of Dan Marino. And then I'd put Dan Marino there. So, uh, let's see. Who is the best super speedway so on, the, on Daytona and Talladega driver and the best short track driver? Honestly, it might kind of shock you. I think the best super speedway driver is Dale Earnhardt Jr. I mean, I mean, we're talking about active, obviously, because his father was ridiculous at it, right? But... I th what does he get? Three or four Dodge, uh, three or four Daytona. I keep wanting to say Dodge Daytona. Three or four Daytona 500 wins. The best short track driver to me is clearly Jeff Gordon. Jeff Gordon is a beast on short tracks, and even this year when he's like a shell of himself, he's still showing what he is on short tracks. So I think he's the best. Uh, see, Dylan Freeman says most people say it isn't, but is your in your opinion is NASCAR a sport? It definitely is a sport. Um, it's not a sport in the same way obviously that we're talking about baseball or football or basketball but you definitely have to be a conditioned athlete to do it it takes a physical skill to do it um, so I would definitely think it's a sport it's not as strenuous or doesn't require you to be the same level of athlete that you know those other major sports do but it's still a sport only hers says your thoughts on Steelers picking up Vic and is it a good move uh, I think it is a good move. Um, I think that if something were to happen with Ben and Ben was to get hurt, I think Michael Vick would be the type of leader and presence the Steelers would need to come in and keep them on track um, if he can stay healthy himself. Uh, and I think that offense is very, very quarterback friendly. So I, I think it's a great pickup. Matt Epting says, do you think that my team on NBA 2K16 this year will be better or not? I think it will be way better. Like, I'm already bought in because of the team customization thing. I told everybody, I've been telling everybody for years, with my ultimate team and with my team, if they allow you to create your own logos, create your own uniforms, your own uh, uh, arenas and everything, I'm totally in. That's exactly what my team has done, and I'm totally in. Outside of something where mode don't work or something to that effect, I'm there. Matt Apting also says, do you think that Kane will ever be the big red monster again? Uh, I think that yes. I think that when he actually lets everybody know, hey, you know, this is my last run. Um, I'm going to be done after this. I think at that point, that's when they give him an opportunity and say, go, be, you know, be that dude and so i do think he'll get an, another opportunity to, to 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 do that so uh but i don't know when but i think when he makes that last run i think that's when he'll grab the mask again matt epting again says i love duke but when do you think coach k will retire um i would say you probably got to give him another five to seven years i mean obviously the He's still having great success. He just won the national championship. 
he's also finally understood that he's going to have to recruit the one and dones if he plans to 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 compete. He didn't want to do that maybe five, seven years ago, but now he's embraced it and he's having success. So it may be something he just doesn't like, though. So we'll see what happens. Pakir1112 has a really interesting one. Unfortunate, but interesting. He says, next Tuesday, this is fun, next Tuesday, which is now. He says, the rape accusation against D. Rose. Your thoughts, sir? Um, I feel like, personally, man, I, nobody knows for sure what happened except for those people. Um, I would hope and I pray that it didn't happen. Uh, and I, I pray that um, if it didn't happen, that that young lady gets whatever help that she needs mentally. Because in my personal opinion, if you're able to tell a lie on someone like that and try to literally ruin their life, then you have a mental problem. Now, if it is true, that is extremely unfortunate and painful for me personally, because I love D. Rose and it's more than just, oh, that's a good athlete. I mean, he is from Chicago. He's from the same bricks I'm from. And for him to have done, if, if that were the case and he did do something like that, it would actually hurt me personally. So uh, I hope that this comes as wiped out and people under get to see the truth. But to add something to this, though, I really, truly believe that if there's any way possible to prove that a person is lying. Now, I'm not I'm not talking about you can just prove you. you they just didn't have enough evidence to prove that this person was guilty. I'm saying if we're able to find a situation where. You uncover text messages, you uncover some kind of phone conversation that proves this person was trying to um, lie on someone to ruin their life for money or for whatever reason. I believe the person making the false accusation should go to jail. I really believe that because I don't think it, there has to be some consequences for doing something of this nature if that's what you're doing. So I don't know if that's what happened. If it's not what happened, then this, that doesn't apply. But um if it does, then I, I, something should be done about that. So, you know, that is what that is. All righty, so let's go into this next question. We spent a lot of time on that one. But Sharuk Rahat says, what are your thoughts on the Ashley Madison hack? What are your thoughts on cheating in relationships? Wow, we're going way real life right now. To be honest with you, I'm not even aware of what is the Ashley Madison hack. I don't really know. But... The cheating in the relationships thing, you shouldn't do it. You shouldn't do it. You pick somebody, you, you go with who you pick. You know what I'm saying? You know, if you do it, you know, you, so it's, a, it's a mistake. It's a bad thing. It's, a, it's maybe not a mistake. You might have did it on purpose. But yeah, no, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a one-woman person. I'm a one, I'm a one-woman man. I'm married. It's awesome. I would advise everyone <laughs> to seek that out because I do believe that is God's will. But. Sharuk Rahad also says, favorite Undertaker WrestleMania match of all time. For me personally, and I'm not an Undertaker hater, but my favorite one was Brock Lesnar beating him at, at WrestleMania. I thought it was like, I love history. I love it when you see something big happen. And what was bigger than that? You know, that was awesome. Sharuk Rahad also says, who's the best, best preseason story so far in the NFL and the player who has performed the best so far? I think. What's going on in Philly is probably the biggest preseason story. Just nobody knows what Chip Kelly's doing. And I think that has everybody, like, just watching. I mean, nobody knows what's up with Matt Barkley and Tim Tebow, even though I do believe Tebow's going to get that third spot. You know, whatever. But the player to me that has performed the best so far is a guy I wanted the Bears to draft so bad. But Tyler Lockett for Seattle is going to be a phenomenal weapon for a defense that's already that good. I mean, you... When you as many punts as they're figuring to, to force, and then you got this guy with field position. Oh my God! It's it. See, I look nasty. See, Von Resper Jr. says, "Do you consider John Cena, Edge, and Randy Orton as legends?" Absolutely, one hundred percent, without a doubt, without a question. That is automatic. Um, I'd say Edge is the least legend of the of the trio, but definitely a legend. We also have Von Resper Jr. says, "Who are your top five? WWE champions in history. Uh, that would be Hogan, uh, Macho Man, The Rock, Stone Cold. And it's a tough one when you're trying to pick between HBK and The Undertaker, but I would probably say 
I probably have a make that a tie, Undertaker and HBK, because I don't think you can leave either one of those guys out. And those guys that I mentioned, you gotta have that core six in there. So yeah. Uh, Will Breedlove says, will we be able to play more than one season of college ball in 2K16? Uh, every Nobody really knows all of the details yet, but I'd be willing to bet that that answer to that is no. I think it's just going to be part of the beginning portion of your my career when you, um, you know, play a little bit of, um, of college basketball. You know, I think that's what it's going to be. You know, you pick your school. I think you might have... I'm thinking you're going to have something like a high school all-star game or something to that effect. Uh, or they might have you play, play in that hoop summit, you know, that they talked about the 2K hoop summit. And then you go on from the plan in the, two, in the hoop summit to playing in uh, college for however many years you want to play in. You can leave her or whatever you want to do. So I think that's it. Simon Torve Sunland says, how good was Daryl Dawkins? Rest in peace, Daryl. Uh, he was a, a good player. Uh, he, was not, he wasn't a great player, but he was a good player. Um, I think like his best season was like 79, 80. I think he averaged like 14 points and like 8.9 rebounds, somewhere in there. Uh, very physical, very athletic. He came straight out of high school. He's one of the first players in NBA history to do that. I believe Bill Willoughby might have been. The, Moses Malone, I think, was the first. And then Bill Willoughby is in there and then Daryl Dawkins. So, and then nobody after that until Kevin Garnett. I, I forget which one came first, but those three, definitely. Uh, so, yeah very uh, historic in that sense uh, Matt Price says businessman one gotta go Dr. Dre Sean Combs Russell Simmons or Jay-Z uh, all of those guys have been have done well from a business standpoint for sure but it's definitely not gonna be Dre with the money he's made and you can't say it would be Jay-Z so I don't know maybe is it Russell Simmons I don't know I, I think they all gotta stay if we all trying to get our money like theirs you know uh, Matt Price says, can you speak to why there are legal issues with tattoos on players in Madden, but no such issues in Live or 2K? I think they're all bound by the same rule, but what I think ha is happening right now is because of the player likeness like lawsuit that EA uh, had with, with NCAA football. And this is just my opinion. It feels like they're a little bit more gun shy. Um, that's what it feels like to me. Or maybe there's some sort of rule or uh, something to that effect that has it where the NBA's Players Association license allows them to include the. T I don't know, but you definitely notice that 2K doesn't seem to have any op any situation any problem getting through that, but Madden does. So I don't know. Um, Long says, do you think this new 2K tax system will allow us to use it for our creative players in my league? I hope so. But I'm gonna be honest, long. I'm not expect. I'm not optimistic about that. I think that's just gonna be a my career thing. I don't know. I really don't know. But I hope we at least see some increased amount of tattoos. That's what I'm hoping. Uh, Ruben Ayala says, "Do you think the fields used during the Little League World Series should be a normal size to prevent injury, and based on the talent?" Uh, I don't think it should be based on the talent. I think it should be whatever it is. But I wouldn't mind seeing the field a little bit bigger. Not too much bigger, but a little bit bigger. Um, just because it's at a point where if a kid hits a ball fairly well in the air, it's a home run. And maybe that's going back to the whole player strength thing. The kids are just bigger and stronger than they used to be. So I don't know, but I do think a little bit bigger would help. Ruben Ayala says, do you think that Pete Rose will ever be in the Hall of Fame? I think if guys like Bonds get a chance, he should also. I think they are, both should be in the Hall of Fame, to be honest. Uh, I can understand how somebody would think Rose should be in there even more because his quote-unquote transgressions have nothing to do with his performance. He is what he is. But with a person like Bonds, even though he's never been proven of any, never been charged of anything, um, what people believe he has done would have affected his performance so I can understand why you would feel that way but I think they all should be in you, you if you're gonna to try to play this like this some moralistic thing it's a lot of people you got to pull out of the Hall of Fame you know so let the game be the game and put the people in and move on Devin Martinez says is JBL a Hall of Famer um I really don't think so I don't I think he's on the cusp, but obviously the Hall of Fame in WWE has far different uh, criteria than, than than sports Hall of Fames. So, but I, 
think JBL's great, but I don't know if, I mean, I don't know if I would put him in the Hall of Fame. You know, that's just me. Devin Martinez also says is a, a better MLB rookie trio, Miguel Sano, Eddie Rosario, Byron Buxton, or Chris Bryant, Addison Russell, or Kyle Schwab. You, you, who you asking? <laughs> who you asking, Dad? Who you asking? But on the real, though, I would have to say the Cubs because just look at performance-wise. I mean, look at what Schwarber has done. I mean, Schwarber and Chris Bryant are arguably 1-2 in Rookie of the Year in the National League right now. You know, and then Addison Russell, while he hasn't hit consistently this year, his defense has been amazing. I think they've all played better than Buxton, and I don't know if we've seen enough from Sano or Rosario yet, so I would say the Cubs. Devin Martinez says, what were your favorite Royal Rumble, Royal, Royal, Royal Rumble surprise comebacks? To me, 2008 John Cena was great. Um, Big Show coming back from injury was great. I really liked Karma coming back. And I think she eliminated like Huna Cole and Jericho and everybody else with a Cole. I don't remember, but I remember her coming back was kind of awesome. Weston Flores says, should the, should the Bears trade Jay Cutler? Um, at this point, no. I mean, because now, if the way it is right now is, if the Bears really want out from Cutler, it's not like it was during this offseason. If they really want out from Cutler, they can release him. They can flat release him at the end of this season, and they won't have the same financial liability that it would have had this season. So, And beyond that, during the preseason, he's played pretty well. So we got to see. Weston Flores says, should Sting beat Seth Rollins at Night of Champions to become the WWE Champion? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I, I'm not totally opposed to taking the belt off Seth. Uh, you know, because he'll get it back at some point. He will, because he's going to be one of those guys that's going to have championship on and off for probably the next seven to ten years, unless he gets hurt or something or does something stupid to get released. But you know, I, 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 I Sting when it come on, man. If you're going to get, why would you ever give Sting the championship at this point in his career? Anyway, why would you do that? That would make no sense to me. Uh, Western Flores also says, when will Roman Reigns win the championship? I, I'm still thinking, I know he's tapped for that. They haven't let him go. He is truly talented. He's just running into this whole power struggle thing with the WWE Universe and the product that they like, which is the stupidest thing in the world. But, yeah, he's running into that. If it wasn't for that whole thing, he'd been a WWE champion already. So I think the middle of 2016 to the latter part is when you'll see him get the belt. Uh, let's see. We also have Fruity Pebbles. I don't, I don't make this stuff up. I don't make it up. He says, if you could put together an elimination chamber, who would the six superstars be? And I wrote this down, Fruity Pebbles, Mr. Pebbles. Uh, Brock Lesnar, Cesaro, Cena, Ziggler, Seth Rollins, and Rusev. To me, you have a good, you have a good amount of strength. You have several people who move well in the ring. And you have the big time stars that would make it compelling to the point where you're not sure who wins. I think the only person in there that you absolutely, without a doubt, know is not going to win is Ziggler. And that's unfortunate because this is the way they do him right now. But whatever. Fruity Pebbles got another one. He says, in ring performer, not current booking. One got to go. Kevin Owens, Cesaro, Seth Rollins, um, Dean Ambrose. Uh, to me, this is easy. Dean Ambrose would be the one that has to go. I think Dean Ambrose is a good, is cool, and he's a good wrestler and a decent wrestler, and he's decent on the mic. But I, I, I really do think he's a little overrated. I really do. You know, I, I, I like him, but I don't think he's, yeah, it's definitely not Seth. He's not to me personally. Uh, that's just me. Uh, Fruity Pebbles says flat. Do you like Fruity Pebbles? You mean you, or do I like the cereal? I don't know what you mean, but um, I like Fruity Pebbles is okay. The cereal, uh, I'm more of a Cocoa Pebbles person, personally, you know, um, but that's just me. Uh, you can eat the cereal you would like to eat. It's okay. Simon Torve Sunland says, I read that Spurs' Harry Kane would like to go to the NFL to be a kicker after retirement. Could that work? Uh, it can work. I've actually, man, this might have been, I don't know how long ago this was. But there was a, 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 a world football um, uh, um, goalie named, I believe his name was Tony Miola. And 
he actually ended up playing for the Jets. It might have been only for like a season or something, or maybe even just in training camp. But he made that move. So I, it's not a totally unprecedented thing that has never happened. So we'll see. 25 to Life says, can we change the format of the playoffs in my league, letting the top six teams, 16 teams face off regardless of conference? I, I'm almost positive no. And because um, I think that's something that we would have heard about already, you know, especially when Eric uh, uh, Benish went through the whole breakdown and he talked about all the different customization things that, you could be, that could be done. I'm pretty sure you can't do that. Um, I, you know, I, you know, I don't know if I even care about that, but yeah, I'm, I'm almost positive you can. B Celtics 34 says, "I know it's a pipe dream for Celtics fans to land the rant, but what? But but we have a what? What is this? What is this? It says, but we have. Oh, I got it. But we have probably the most to offer. What do you think the chances are? Um, I think that they're not very good. <laughs> I don't think they're very good. I do believe he's leaving." That I do believe. And I do believe he's going to leave for a pretty major market. But I'm thinking it's probably going to be, I just believe it's going to be watched. I really, truly believe it's going to be watched. And I still believe that. We'll see what happens. Uh, b Celtics 34 says, are you going to be playing Gears of War? Keep it up on the dope vids. I appreciate that, sir. Um, I I really did. I, lo I mean, when Gears of War first came out, I was, man, I was hooked on that. Right? I didn't play 2 or 3 very much. But I was on, very much on Gears of War. I have not created enough time yet for me to do videos on any non-sports game. I, man, I was talking to another video game journalist, and I was like, man, do you ever get a chance just to play for fun? He was like, what's that? I'll, when do I get a chance to play for fun? So it's not just me, but uh, so I don't know. I don't know. I would love if I did, though. Uh, ben says, well, Jake Arrieta, woo, no, no. Win the Cy Young after this beautiful no-no. Um, the answer to that is no-no, probably. Unless Zach Grinke just blows it the rest of the season, I think he has it pretty much wrapped up. Jake, to me, has been the best pitcher in the major league since slightly before the All-Star break, but I just don't know if it's going to be enough to take it away from Grinke. I mean, Grinke's leading the league in the ERA, and he got like a, what, 0.5? lead on Arietta, so I, I don't know. Last question is from Will Breedlove. He says, what are your favorite things to do that aren't sports related? They're family related. I love spending time with my wife. I like spending time with my kids. I like to listen to music with my wife. Um, that's the stuff that I, uh, I like movies a lot, so I like to watch a lot of movies. And um, You said not related to sports, so I was going to say I like to play sports, but that's still sports. But uh, yeah, that's about it. But I do appreciate you watching for sure. We might have to. I'm getting such, and I appreciate this. I'm getting such a response from Ask FP. I may be at a point where I have to start taking the top 20, 25 questions. I thought this might happen. I'm grateful that it's happened because it means you guys are asking these questions. But um, that may happen. So I will let you know. But in the meantime, I appreciate you watching. God bless. Peace.